Hello and welcome to episode 11 of U Squad Prospects 5 with Bradford City and it's a post-com episode today. Going to try and get through the season as quickly as we can. Going to go through the month of September, obviously Port Vale, Crawley, Macclesfield and Grimsby Town all in there. I'm going to try and go through October as well, but I might stop midway through. We've got Stevenage, Bolton in the Leeson.com trophy. Then at Rochdale, Cambridge, Bolton again, but this time in League 2, Salford City, and finally Leighton Orient. A lot of games to go through, I think we can go through them all. And since there are no kit upgrades, we're going to start with the game against HWM players as Paul Vale. Enjoy the episode with Postcom Rodolfo. Alright, so first game is against Port Vale, and it is HWM players as team for this year, and also... JJ Lons' team as well, he decided to do them on FM instead, which is a nice uh, breath of fresh air, to be honest. Fortunately, not the best of starts. We started off 1-0 down from the kickoff glitch. What else? It's just one of them things. Anyway, we still had the game uh, in front of us, basically. And we did quite well. We did quite well, to be fair. We did bounce back really nicely. Donaldson... Fires home the equaliser a quarter of an hour in, and look at that for a sexy walk. That's a celebration right there, and the fans are going mental. Kavanagh pulled off a couple of good saves as usual, and unfortunately we conceded that. It's an absolute grass cutter, but O'Carroll decides to chest it to the other side of the net, and Kavanagh has no time to react to it, which is quite... Quite sad indeed. We did bounce back again though. Bruno this time uh, scores from Donaldson's assist and not the other way around. And we eventually turned the tables around. Donaldson with his brace. And Kavanagh again saves the day. 2-3. What a game. Cracking game for the neutrals. Had drama everything right there. Second game against Crawley Town. Um... This is still in the old patch as well, which I found really interesting how it was a lot more difficult than usual. Boral scored a, a quite a lucky goal there, got tackled, and it eventually led in. But justice was made shortly after that. Donaldson couldn't capitalise, and we had to make some substitutions. We had the best chance of the game through Dylan Cooper, but unfortunately the target system decides to get in the way. Here's some proof. I'm aiming at the back of the net. It goes completely to the side. What is this game on, seriously? I thought it was better at the start, but now it just feels like the same old FIFA 19 target system. But anyway, we had to move on. Daru plays in Jackson here, and he sends Boral through with this one, and there you go. There's the winning goal, or so we thought. Cooper decides to fuck up again, and we ended up drawing this game. What an absolute shit show this was. After such a great, great, great game against Port Vale. We just bottled it against Crawley. Uh, then we had the Macclesfield game, and absolutely nothing happened. I'm sorry, Monterey, here's your plug. He is doing it, but unfortunately there's nothing on that game. That was a waste of time, literally. Moving on to the game against Grimsby, Bradley Edwards scored early on, six minutes in, and he fired it into the back of the net. Finally showing some flashes of brilliance, which was nice to see, but this game had one man for man of the match, and that was Kavanagh. Insane save after insane save, even Harris joined in on the fun. Nice to see that eventually went off for a standing ovation, there it is. And in the 90th minute, with the top-notch save, denying that front post OP, which is so annoying. We did them dirty, smash and grab. So, unfortunately, I lost the recording between the months of September and October. And the only reason that is important is because I decided to get myself a Scout Future Star. I think this is the second and final Scout Future Star I'm going to get in the series. This is where I'd be a bit sad because I promoted him straight away. Are you ready? Here he is, Mike Dijkstra. He's a centre-back, 62, he is Dutch. An exciting prospect. 
can play as a center back or as a left back, which I found really nice. Three star, three star. He's six foot two. He's quick. He's got good stamina, good strength. I think he was around 82 to 94 potential. So I'd say he's about 87, 88. But we'll see. And with the dynamic potential, that is also subject to change. And the extra, the new scout future star will actually get his debut against Stevenage in the next game. Started off pretty brightly, which is not usual us. We normally start on the back foot. Bruno smashes in uh, Borrell's sublime assist. The step overs were brilliant, and the through ball was neat. Tiny finish at the front post, but unfortunately it was not meant to be. We were uh, put to the sword after that. Quick equaliser, and then this pass. Seriously, how did he even pull that off? Congratulations. What a, a finish that was. Anyway, moving on to the second half, we started off again getting back into the game through Donaldson's kickoff. Delicious step overs there as well, but unfortunately he actually bottled the final chance of the game, which was the best one. And we were left stranded at 2-2, probably the deserved score. Borrell was the man of the match, of course, he didn't bottle it, he was the one that deserved it. Anyway, Leasing.com trophy against the relegated Bolton. Didn't start off great and we would soon find out luck was not in our side, just watch this. Lee is denied by... Matthews and Zaru just can't put enough power on it. With luck like that, we just seem condemned. The camper save kind of brought me back into the game, but shortly after this happened, just, yeah, camper again, brilliant save, but nothing there to be done. And I love how camper never gave up when the rest of the team did. He did his best, but we were out of the Leeson.com trophy. I'm not really complaining. It frees up the schedule, at least. And next game was against Rochdale. Again, down in Morel, uh, personally playing this game. We did do better. O'Carroll somehow finds himself in the box at the end of the first half to equalise. And we were back in the game. He was He's always captain. I don't know why. I need to change that and quick. I do think Kavanagh deserves the armband. And unfortunately, we were to concede there. The headers, man, in this game are so inconsistent. Anyways, we got back. Equaliser. Another two-all draw. How many two-all draws have we had this episode? It's ridiculous how predictable this game is. Again, Cambridge started off losing. And unfortunately, we weren't going to come back from this. Dallas was denied by Kavanagh coming out. But... But the scripting monster decides to work its magic right here. Quadra doesn't get the ball off his opponent and eventually concedes the own goal, betraying Kavanagh. And from the corner kick, what did I say about headers? How does Joel Jackson not win the header there? Kill the momentum with the second goal. The third was the confirmation. We did get the consolation in the end. Eklund with a nice run and El Shinawi taps it in. Again, very frustrating game. I think the sliders needed a slight adjusting, uh, to be honest, because this just felt bullshit after the second Bolton game. Just that through ball right there shows it, and Camper was left for dead, basically. The whole team was left for dead, and the second move as well, pretty nice. It just feels like they're so good at uh, burying their chances, it's ridiculous. Neddy Alcock got one back at the start of the second half. Nice little pose for the cameras right there. Gotta love it. <laughs> but unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. Hall plays in Darcy. Camper saves it, actually. But with our luck this episode, we ended up losing again. See where I'm going with this? Next up, we did actually bump the sliders down for this one uh, slightly. Not, uh, it was still... Very hard sliders, but it did feel a lot better. Borrell smashed it in at the near post a quarter of an hour in. It seems like our best bit of the games. Quarter of an hour in to the end of the first half. But we did hold on this time, and it was a very nice game. It was tough, but we did eventually come out with the win. Good goal by Borrell. Capitalised on the chances that we had. And if you think the sliders were too easy, I kept them for this game. 
And Kavanagh pulled off an amazing save to start off things, but it wasn't meant to be. Leighton Orient gets the go-ahead goal right there, and then this happened. What am I doing there with Harris? No clue whatsoever. Kavanagh yet again does not give up. Like the calamity that was the defence today. And what was a close game ended up being 3 0. So, yeah, that was the episode. So, the scout reports that just came back, and all of them, and I do mean all of them, were shocking. So, we're going to send the scouts out again. Move on to the scouting suggestions. I've got them on Discord right now. If you want to drop more, I'm just going to do them in chronological order. So, here we go. Next one on the list. We're going to Saudi Arabia, and that is a suggestion from Kennedy. Thank you. For You've been a really nice help with both the kit upgrades and the scouting missions. I'm going to go there for three months. Then, of course, we've got a mandatory one, which is to scout the motherland of England. I'm going to keep Henry Griffiths around his land for three months. And finally, we're going to go to France, thanks to our context committee. We're going to go there for three months. Bring us back another The Fresno. That would be nice. I've got some wonderful news. Lou Kavanagh has just hit 60 overall. And I'm very glad to report he's showing great potential. So hopefully with the uh, dynamic potential he grows up to an exciting prospect. I think that would be accurate for his worth at the moment. But I'm glad he's reached 60 so quick. I haven't touched him in the training. Hopefully can grow them reactions. He's already up to 62, which is nice. Coming along very nicely. Anyway, I've just uh, reformed the starting 11, and this is what it's going to look like from now on. Finally put the armband on Kavanagh, and let's have a look at the league table to wrap episode 11 up. Finally, after two weeks of being away, I know guys, it's been a long, long two weeks for me as well. We're still hanging on to the top 10, which is good, but we've lost some steam in the promotion push. We need to pick up the pace next episode, that's for sure. Anyone interested in the sliders that I used in the final few games, I decided to bump up the shot error on the CPU and the pass error as well. And I took some speed down as well. It was at 55 down to 50, here it was at 35 up to 40, up from 15 to 20 on the pass error. Uh, the goalkeeper ability took it down a bit to 65. Still feels a bit too much, to be honest, but it is nice. It is better than 70, where goalkeepers would just save everything. Uh, the run frequency feels nice. It feels like the CPU are actually going for it. And uh, decided to bring the first touch control error. I don't know if it was from 25 or 30 up to 35. It feels a lot better now. Uh, in the games that we used the sliders, the last two, we did beat Salford, but we did lose to Leighton Orient at the same time. So we're going to have to wait for next episode to really see how they are looking like. Anyways, that is it for this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. I'm going to see you all next time. And until then... Have a good one. Bye-bye.